Sam makes a surprising choice that demonstrates progress toward his objectives, but Dr. Strauss demands something more. In this episode, Alan unintentionally persuaded Sam that killing his controlling father would solve all of his issues. He therefore proceeds to do it. We finally get to see the man who has been so frequently spoken in derogatory words. He is also unremarkable. Scruffy looking. When Sam shows up, he appears to live alone and offers to prepare him a sandwich. But Sam's father seems wrong in some way. While the cantor's husband does not portray him as a ravaging dictator, it does allow for a hint of animosity. When Sam questions him about why he smacked him so frequently as a child, he brushes it off, blaming Sam's weirdness and Candace for holding him responsible. He appears to be apologizing for missing supper by saying, sorry, anyway. It makes sense why Sam would want to choke the man. It is understandable why he begins to. Oddly, he then stops. When Sam tells Alan about it, the latter tells him that this is the significant development they have been waiting for. It demonstrates his evolution. He stopped himself from being his father at that very time after realizing he didn't want to be him. Even though I've personally witnessed Sam kill two people, neither for any reason, the childlike smile that appears on his face when Alan tells him he's proud is pitiful, horrifying, and perplexing, since it caused me to root for him just a little bit. However, Alan's smile doesn't appear sincere. His performance appears forced, and his comments lack sincerity. In order for Sam to have the same success with Ezra as he has had with his own father, Alan seizes the chance to advise that it's time for him to return home. He's willing to keep seeing Sam in his practice and is obligated morally and legally to keep him out of trouble. There is no loser here. Sam misunderstands what was said, buys a sofa and a mini fridge, and offers to fill them with whatever Alan requests. Additionally, he uses Alan's own words against him by pointing out that counseling might occasionally take years. Alan and Charlie have a quick talk in which Alan realizes what's going on. Sam wants a new father figure. He wants to start over in life, but this time without the trauma he experienced before. Naturally, Alan isn't interested in that. So he again modifies his strategy. Sam is awakened in the middle of the night by him, who informs him that counseling is done. Sam has two options. Kill Alan and be done with it, or turn himself in so he can be institutionalized and restrained from acting on his desires, allowing him to heal. This marks the end in either case. Sam simply puts his jacket on and walks away. He is seen sitting silently outside the police station. He makes a childlike turn to face his mother. Recall the query we presented at the beginning? Candace asks Alan to stay when she goes downstairs to feed him his scrambled eggs, saying Sam isn't ready for him to go. Again, Alan says, this is over. He even tells Candace the harsh reality. Despite the fact that she was not at fault for Sam's maltreatment, she did nothing to shield him from it. Her inaction is crucial to everything, just as it is right now. She sobs. Alan grabs her and presses the Chekhov foot cream tube to her throat as he goes to offer her a tissue. He may not be able to defeat a strong, somewhat young male, but he can defeat a woman in her middle years. Sam must surrender or Alan would slit his mother's throat. Sam doubts if he is the kind of man who is capable of doing that. We cut away as soon as we notice that Candace's neck is being cut open by the tube's razor-sharp edge. In his mind, Alan is gassed at Auschwitz. He envisions himself singing Hebrew melodies while eating supper with his family, seated next to Ezra. Back in the basement, we can see why. He has passed away. He has been choked by Sam. He finds the message Alan wrote on the yellow legal pad on his bed and carries his open-eyed corpse into the improvised cemetery in the adjacent room. This letter is an apology, a farewell, and a warning not to let his passing define the rest of their lives to his children. They are seen reading it. Sam encloses a letter from himself with it, stating that Alan is deceased, but that he was very helpful to him, and that Sam has buried Alan's body appropriately per Jewish mourning customs. Sam goes back to the basement and, as he looks about at how empty it is, he imagines Alan assuring him that he'll kill once more. He gives Candace the key and shackles himself to the bed, where Alan has been hiding out all this time. Ezra starts therapy into the patient's final scene. 